Hi there! As you can see by the title, I'm going to be teaching you how to make a custom running animation for your puppet in Dreams. So, without further ado, let's get right to it. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to take a look at the preset animation. For this, we'll open up the Tweak menu, head over to the Behavior tab, and at the bottom, we'll notice a setting for something called Procedural Walk. Now what this does is it basically takes a single keyframe of any pose and the game will automatically generate that into a running animation. So let's close this all up and take a quick look at how it all works. Now, as you can see, this is working just fine and this will be okay for most people, but it might not be okay for you if you wanna create more drastic poses. For that, we'll wanna go custom. So our first step is gonna be back into the puppet tweak menu we're going to go down to procedural walk and turn that right off. We'll give it a quick test. And as you can now see, it completely turns off the default running animation. So unless you're going to want your character to slide around, we're going to have to make our own animation now. To do this, we're going to open up the animation menu and we're going to put down a timeline. After that, we can open up the timeline and place our first keyframe on the timeline. Now it's important to know that your animation is entirely up to you and this will be the longest part of the process. So make sure to take your time. And if you get stuck, use a run cycle as a reference. When using the keyframe tool for your animation, do not move the entire puppet because what that will do is it will save its location within the entire level, effectively making your puppet teleport back to where you first made that animation. Instead, we're going to scope into our puppet and move it limb by limb. Remember, your animation and poses will entirely depend on you, so make sure to experiment with it until you're happy. And sometimes, when moving parts around, you'll notice things like the heels locking up. It's a quick fix for that. Just hover over the heel and hit triangle, and it'll snap back down to where it should be. Now, I know this isn't the best looking pose, and I'm positive that you can do a better job. This is just for demonstration purposes. And once you're happy with your pose, you'll copy it over and tweak it into a different pose. Remember to set your timeline to loop and keep doing this until you have a full animation that you're happy with. Skipping ahead a little bit and I've finished my animation. And it's a little complicated. Now, you don't have to do it this way. This is just my preference. And as you can see, I labeled and animated each body part independently which for me makes it easier to make adjustments. If we open up one of these timelines, you'll find each frame of animation, and this is the same for each body part. For a better look at the way I did this, you can find this creation on the Dreamiverse. Just look for Milo, spelled M-Y-L-O, the monkey. If you do decide to take a better look at him, you'll also find some more features that are not covered in this video, which I will hopefully be able to go over very soon. So now we can just pull up this menu and we can preview our animation and see where we're at. And it's looking okay so far. And remember, your animation and poses are entirely up to you. There is no right or wrong way to do it, just whatever you're happy with. Now that we did this, we can go in and give it a quick test. And as you'll see, it looks so much better in motion. But of course, it becomes quickly apparent that there's a little problem. He's running in place. To fix this, we're going to add some logic to this animation. We'll open up the gadgets menu, select the logic and processing sub-menu, and stamp down a microchip. We'll rename it and give it a new icon, simply for organization's sake. It's not necessary, but it will make things a lot easier going forward. We'll open up our microchip and stamp down our animation timeline. We'll reopen the gadgets menu and stamp down an end gate next. We'll reopen it, scroll on down to the gameplay gear section, and put down a puppet interface. Next, we'll go into the tweak menu of the puppet interface and connect the on the ground sensor to the AND gate. Then, close that up, head on over to the controller, and we're going to connect the left stick into the same AND gate. Once we've done this, we can wire the AND gate right up into the timeline, and we will be good to go. And with everything now connected, we can go in and give it another quick test to make sure that everything is working properly. And it does! As you can see, the running animation only plays 
when the character is touching the ground and moving. And now you have a completed run animation. You can stop here if you want, but I'll be continuing on with a secondary run. I did a quick cleanup of the wires and I'm ready to begin. This next function works effectively as a sprint, but for my purposes I'm creating a four-legged run, which as you can see here, I already did the animations for, and it looks good enough. For our secondary run, we'll be repeating the same process that we did for the first run. To begin, we'll make a clone of the AND gate and wire it the exact same way with the on the ground sensor and the left stick sensor going straight into the AND gate. We're doing this because we do not want both animations to run simultaneously. So to combat that, we'll have two AND gates, one of which will have an additional control. For this example, I'll be using the left trigger, but before I do that, I'll put down a signal manipulator and wire the trigger directly into that. The reason I'm doing this is because if I don't, the player will be able to partially hold down the trigger, which won't send a full signal to the animation, which results in a partial animation. If you look at the long button at the top of the signal manipulator, you'll notice that if I put a tiny bit of pressure on the trigger, it lets out a dim light, meaning it's not a complete signal. The good thing about the signal manipulator is we're able to fix this very easily. And to fix this, we're simply going to remap the threshold. We'll lower it however low you want to go. In my case, I'll be lowering it to 0.01. I'll give it a quick test and we'll see the difference. Now, if we have even the tiniest bit of pressure on the trigger, it will result in a full signal. So no matter how much pressure you're putting, you'll always get a full output, meaning if you hold it slightly, you'll still get the full animation playing. We can close this all up and we can wire the signal manipulator right into the third slot of the AND gate. Now we only have one problem left to fix, and that is that both animations share some of the same inputs, meaning that they will still both be playing at the same time. But thankfully, like many things so far, this is a pretty easy fix. What we'll do is we'll open up the animate menu and we're going to place down a keyframe. And in that keyframe, we'll animate ourselves deactivating the original AND gate. After that, we can wire the second AND gate right into that keyframe. So now, when the second AND gate and second animation plays, it'll also play a keyframe that deactivates the original animation. So now, only one animation will play at a time. Now, we can test this out again and see that everything is working properly. Now only one run cycle will play at a time. Of course, now we can see a new problem has arisen, and that is that this is way too slow, especially if this is going to be a kind of sprint function. All we need to do is go back into our keyframe and hit record. We're going to open up the puppet's tweak menu, and here we're going to adjust the run speed of the puppet, so that way when it's doing its secondary animation, it will be at a completely different speed than the original one. Once you're happy with the speed you have chosen, we can close everything up and give it one final test. Now we can see that we have the ability to toggle between two completely different runs without any issue. And the best part is that they are completely custom and made from scratch. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you learned something. Now have a good night and sweet dreams.